Good morning, y'all. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back on. Y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. You know, I've had some serious technical difficulties for the last few days, and I've been really trying to get this um, going again because it seemed like the, when you really get, got stuff going on, at least me, that's when my stuff breaks down, you know, and it's just really complicated when that happens. So I'm back on, and I'm glad. And the first thing I want to address is this hurricane um, and what happens when we start talking about large levels of, um, you know, destruction. So now there is no money because we send it all to Ukraine and everywhere else. So unless we're going to go print out some more, uh, America is not able to, as far as they say, um, put the towns back together. Okay? Now, when you talk to the Christians, you know, I, I, I don't want to come down on y'all right now. But I didn't really had enough of this craziness is that God is attacking us. He's not happy with what's going on. And so, therefore, he's, uh, she's blessing us with all this destructive weather. Okay. Do y'all know that those of y'all who are Bible readers and thumpers and what not. You know you said that man going to get so wise that he going to destroy himself, right? So why are you thinking that if that's the case, if you can't say it, you can't have it both ways. This is to all my Christian friends. You can't have it both ways. You can't say man is going to get so wise he going to destroy himself and then at the same time um, <laughs> watch the destruction and then just say Oh, God is angry. That 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 does make not make any sense. Okay? Makes no sense whatsoever. So it brings it back to did man make God or did God make man? That's a, that's a Show enough live question for your ass. Now, without you know, without no further ado, I want y'all to check out what redacted, and I want y'all encourage all of y'all to go over to uh, if you want to hear some news that's outside of this commercial news, uh, garbage that they feeding us every day. If you want to see some real, real independent stuff outside the garbage that they want us to regurgitate, why don't y'all go over to Redacted and check out um, some real news? But let me check, let me uh, get this to y'all um, in terms of those who understand that the government has a lot to do with what's going on with the weather. Harp, for those of y'all who don't believe it or don't ain't never heard about it, Check it out, okay? Harp, I forgot. I can't think what it stands for right now, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Right now, y'all deal with this. All right. Well, since World War II, the United States government have been able to manipulate the weather. Uh, that's a fact. You can look it up. Since the 1960s, we've been able to control and even weaponize the weather. That's a fact. You can look it up. We did and, it in Vietnam. Yeah. Exactly. And in the 1970s, the United States Congress put forth a bill to regulate weather manipulators. That's right. In case you had some sort of a weather manipulation tool, the United States government wanted you to uh, register it with the United States government and get a license for it. That's how much we were doing. Swelling means there's blood and fluid getting... Okay. 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 So we'll come back to that part of the story in a second. But first, when Hurricane Katrina destroyed New Orleans and the Gulf Coast in 2005, a lot of people got very rich. I don't know if you know that. That story hasn't really been covered or talked much about. Millionaires, in fact, were made as a result of it. Millionaires were made almost overnight. 
as a result of this destruction. 80% of the land, of course, was destroyed in New Orleans at the time, and all the way up through the Mississippi into Biloxi and everything else was wiped away. Most of it purchased by property developers. Um, and black residents of New Orleans at the time weren't stupid. They knew exactly what was happening to them. Here's a nice paycheck. Now leave and never come back. We'll take your land. Don't worry. Get out of here. Um, porn, uh, the, 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 take the town of Point Cadet, a hurricane-battered blue-collar neighborhood in East Biloxi, Mississippi. Homes were totally flattened. Casinos swooped in, bought up all of the land. Casino operators snatch up tracts of land from property owners whose homes were flattened by the hurricane on August 29th, 2005. Now this area, tourist destination, right? And nice casinos, restaurants, nice pier, all of that, nice shopping and everything. No more pesky homeowners with riverfront property. Just like Maui, Lahaina, right? Where massive wildfires took out all the homes, people that lived there for well over 100 years. A lot of generational families in those areas now just wiped away perfect tourist destination properties in that area. Uh, they, the people that own those houses, of course, are totally inconvenient. Get out of here. We need this, this oceanfront property for new resorts. On November 13, 1946, pilot Curtis Talbot working for the General Electric Research, um, Research Laboratory, he climbed up to the top... <coughs> of a local area, local peak, 14,000 feet high near Schenectady, I love that name, near Schenectady, New York. Talbot, along with another researchers um, from GE, released just three pounds, just three pounds of dry ice into the clouds, high above Schenectady. And suddenly it began to swirl. Suddenly ice crystals formed, and then it started to snow. Big, big snow uh, was a result of that. Um, obviously, this is not footage from 1946, but this is snow. And it was it was pretty crazy. This was the first time they had created the first man-made snowstorm just after World War II. Then experiments continued into rain and man manipulation of tornadoes and hurricanes, and it came quietly. Then came Project Cirrus, which has been recently declassified. 1947, U.S. experiment, along with the United States Navy, the Army, General Electric, they attempted to control hurricanes using cloud seeding. It was aimed at reducing the severity of storms. But guess what? It did the exact opposite, and efforts actually redirected a hurricane right towards Georgia. Pretty remarkable, actually. You can see the, look at the path of this hurricane. They started seeding the clouds after the hurricane had already gone through the southern tip of Florida and it was heading out to sea, moving away from Florida. It literally redirected it away from Florida. Then it's, once they started seeding the clouds, look at this. It redirected it back into Georgia, bringing devastation to Georgia. It was gone. It was out to sea. Let's bring it back using our cloud seeding. The idea was to lessen the severity of it. Of course, they did the exact opposite. After this, by the way, GE quit this, said they're done because they were worried about lawsuits, legal ramifications of this. But, of course, the U.S. government continued it. The United States Army, the United States Navy continued this prop, this opportunity. Uh, in 1953, in fact, the President of the United States launched the Advisory Committee on Weather Control. They realized that controlling the weather and weaponizing the weather was more powerful than a nuclear bomb. Why? Because after a nuclear bomb... You render the ground completely useless. But using weather is just a temporary inconvenience. And you can manipulate it in any way that you want. In the Cold War, both the United States and the Soviet Union ramped up their weather manipulation efforts, weaponizing these tools. These superpowers realized that by controlling the weather, they could destabilize entire regions without firing a single bullet. Take Operation Popeye, for example. Uh, you know, get your spinach out here. This was during the Vietnam War. It is a prime example. Through cloud seeding, U.S. forces in Vietnam extended the monsoon season over the Ho Chi Minh Trail, creating floods that hampered enemy supply lines. This was the first real-world application of weather manipulation for warfare, the weaponization of, of weather. And but it I'm worked. sure they don't do that anymore. I'm sure they don't at all. Uh, all the supply lines were stuck on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and the U.S. bombed the shit out of it. They were stuck. Perfect destruction. You can actually still see the craters today along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. All of the bombings that happened in that mud-soaked, uh, you know, in, in that mud-soaked incident. 
These programs continued in earnest, of course. The United States and Russia, then the Soviet Union, both explored weather manipulation during the Cold War. The U.S. considered cloud seeding to break up tornadoes or even to induce drought on the Soviet Union. We're going we're gonna to dry you up. No food production in the Soviet Union. The U.S. also considered melting polar ice caps to uh, alter climate patterns against the Soviets. Y'all hear this? Fast forward to today, and we have to wonder, have these programs quietly just sort of continued? <laughs> Advanced to the point where entire... Okay, now let's just think about it for a minute. The programs that went totally away, they just decided as greedy and manipulative and as devilish as the elite are, this government, you think they just decided, okay, we'll stop this. Or they say, hey, uh, this is a money maker. Let's keep this going. Which one of y'all think? Which one? Storms can be created or intensified and will. Take Hurricane Helene, for example. On the surface, it seems like, yeah, it's just another storm here, right? Another intense storm. But there are clear signs this could be the result of human intervention. The erratic nature of this path, the unprecedented rainfall, we're talking over 40, what was it, 40, 40 trillion gallons. 40 trillion gallons of water. Unprecedented amount of water that, that hit this area. The concentrated devastation in key areas, by the way, very specific areas. It's not just, na it, could it be, you know, nature just acting unpredictably? It doesn't seem so. It's possible that we are seeing modern day weather warfare. An investigation, uh, investigative journalist over to, in, into thin air pointed out a number of radar beam anomaly, anomaly, anom anomalies, anomalies, how am I saying this? Anomalies. Anomalies. My God, why? You know, I have one of those moments where you can't say it. Mm -hmm. um, with Hurricane Helene. Watch this and watch these radar beams, which is stunning. All right, everyone, welcome back. We are waiting the arrival of major category four Hurricane Helene. This thing is an absolute monster. But take a look at this anomaly that's shooting down almost to where we're going to see landfall. It's very interesting. I'm curious to see if this thing actually lands right on top of where we think landfall is going to be. Now, there's something else kind of shooting out here underneath this layer of moisture over the southeast. Looks like it's coming from either northern Florida or a radar tower in southern Georgia. But the main one right here, look at this big beam that shoots down right to about here. That's where we're expecting landfall, give mm. or take. Now, something even more interesting, I want to show you on a more detailed chart. All right, I'll show you once here, and then we'll zoom in. But take a look. It's coming from up in this area, and it shoots down right to about here where we're expecting landfall. Mm. I'll move forward, and you'll pretty much see it right away. There it is now. Boom, right here. Okay, so now we're going to zoom in and see exactly where this thing points to, because that is mm. not your normal beam that you see coming from these radar. It's definitely coming from the state of Georgia, probably underneath this mess here. Mm. It's coming this way, and there's a cross of that other beam, either coming from northern Florida or southern Georgia. All right, this is about as mm. close as we're going to get. We're going to see one anomaly. Yeah. What the? So it's not something to discount. Go down this massive rabbit hole. Want to go down this massive what? rabbit what hole? What the? The applications that have been in the works with sound, Yo. sound technology to redirect weather. What patterns. are we you dealing with? Seating, using these types of... Do y'all know what we're dealing with? Let's continue. The beams to redirect clouds. Unbelievable. It's not something to discount, especially with the people of North Carolina right now, specifically Asheville, rightly want to know why suddenly there was a massive hurricane that struck their land, bringing 40 trillion gallons of water. Water they say they've never seen before in the state's history. Back in 2001, of course, you have patent application publications for, uh, for uh, hurricane and tornado control devices. Uh, now, this patent back in 2001 was sort of language. Hurricane and tornado so control device. Again and sold off to another individual. Jeez. And you can read all of these patents. You can see the different technology, the abstract. A method is disclosed for affecting the formation and or direction oh, of low atmospheric weather God. systems. Audio generators are positioned to project sound waves towards a peripheral area of a weather system. The sound waves are generated at a frequency to affect the formation of weather systems in a matter to disrupt, enhance, or direct the formation. Mm. Mm. Sure, it's all just total coincidence, though, right? Um, but I think Eve for America sums it up nicely with her cup of coffee, <laughs> questioning all of this. 
And this is a rabbit hole you can deeply go down if you'd like to, but the people of North Carolina who are still looking for victims today and wondering what happens to their land now that all of these towns are wiped away, will the government swoop in and hand them a check for using imminent domain? Here's all of your money. Here's some money. Get out of here because there's large mineral deposits underneath your house. There's large swaths of, of, of you know, useful resources that the United States government wants, or not just the United States government, but large corporations want, just like we saw in Hurricane Katrina, just like we're seeing in Maui. There are no coincidences. Here's Eve for America. I like this. I grew up always on the bigger side as a kid. I was always... Mm, mm, mm. Y'all hear this? I hate all these... Um... Ads. Hold on a minute. Here we go. But I find suspicious as shit that one of the areas affected by Hurricane Helene is the world's largest lithium deposit, and the DOD just entered into an agreement with this company right here to mine lithium for electric cars starting in 2025. Now that area is completely devastated. This is a $90 million agreement between the DOD and this company right here to get Kings Mountain, North Carolina lithium mine up and running by 2030. If that area has been inundated, is in a disaster zone, then the government can come in and do eminent domain and they can pay you what it was worth five years ago rather than what it's worth right now. Imagine that your home has turned into a watery lot and the government comes to you and says, hey, I'll pay you what you paid for it. You're gonna take it and you're gonna go, right? What do you think's gonna happen right here now that they want this lithium mine up and running by 2025, 2030 at the latest? Back in 1947, we had the Florida Georgia hurricane or hurricane nine and it was the first hurricane to be targeted for weather modification. What happened was General Electric's, the U.S. Navy, the Army, the Air Force, they poured dry ice into this hurricane using airplanes to see what would happen. Would they slow it down? Well, what happened was it slowed down a little bit, but it turned west really sharp. Let me show you. This is the path that the hurricane took in 1947. Does it look similar to you? Probably not, it's a coincidence, right? Moving on, I'm sure this is just another coincidence, but do you know who owns the most shares in that lithium mine? BlackRock and Vanguard. Get the heck out of here, do you just get the heck out? You get the heck out of here, Eve. I cannot. I love Eve with her cup of coffee. Um, yeah, we noticed, sure you, we noticed you were homeless. Uh, may we, may we uh, the government offer you uh, to continue to be? How about that? Right. That's our, yeah. that's our Here's a little check. offer. You're That's homeless the plot now. of Twisters. I'm sorry if I gave that away, but like weather this manipulation. Is yeah, true exactly. As fiction, okay. Can I don't know what is worse. Okay, so now y'all can sit back and think all this is the act of God, and we just in the middle of some stuff we can't. Uh, uh, say and give no logical explanation behind even though the hurricanes are getting worse um the people are coming back in and taking up the land and building it up and kicking the people and the residents who've lived there before they gone so it just seems hmm, things that make you go hmm okay so I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really imploring you to stay woke. And for some of y'all Christians, you don't have to come with me no more and say that uh, God is punishing us. Because I don't even want to hear it no more, Cletus. Okay? This is my nice way of telling you, please do not, um, you know, indoctrinate my Facebook or stuff with that Jesus is uh, mad at everybody. And this is what's going on. Yeah. God is watching us from a distance. But like I said, did man make God or did God make man? Some people say, it's all in the book. When I breathe into you my breath of life and you became a living soul. And then you already, already told you God is a spirit. So we worship God in spirit and truth. In spirit and in truth. Mm. What is all this crazy stuff that we talking? I mean, uh, look at all this damn double talk. Cause your answer is right in front of you. If God and breath, if if the life breathed into you, whew, made you a living soul, and you are the manifestation of the Almighty God, that means 
You're God. That means you created this crap. That means you've created the heaven and hell for all of us to go to. And you got a whole bunch of people believing some stuff that got no power. Really got no power. They got the power. It's their manifestation. Now you can believe it or not. And you can challenge me. I welcome it. So with that being said. If you like what you hear. Please like, subscribe, and share. This video. And especially to your. Christian friends. They need to know. With that being said, I'll talk to you in the next video. And I'm glad to be back on, y'all. Oh, I'm so glad to be back on.